Welcome to Wayne's Weird World. What do we have? Wood! Yes, guys, come on. Up. Come say hello. Look, don't they look the same? Well, similar, sort of. What? No. You go look someplace. Oh, yeah. You want that. Don't you knock all my sticks over. Personalizing a walking stick. Every now and then, you're going to need something to help support yourself. The first time I did this was a little kid in primary school. Ah, crap! Jumping off uh, the neighbor's garage roof with a bath towel around my neck playing Superman. Bruised both heels. Then, broke my leg in grade 10 high school, both bones above the right, the right ankle, and I end up in plaster from my toes to my hip. Whoa! Gotta put these things out of the way. Look out, Gus. This is one that I use if I have to, to completely take the weight off a leg. Not near as good as a pair of crutches, but quite substantial. Don't you knock all these things over. Ah, this one is quite good because it's just about the right height for my elbow. And you can lean on it quite nicely. This one's definitely right-handed. Definitely right-handed. As is this one, I think. This one could become either left or right once it's carved away. Get those kinkies out of the way. This one, strange angle, but someone might like it. I think this one's also definitely a right-handed one. This could be either right or left. Again, strange angle, but I like it. Ah, deciding on the length. I do this and I ask them to put their hand where they want to hold the walking stick. Then I mark it with chalk, cut it a little bit on the long side and I can always shorten it up. A couple of the natural twists. This is like, almost like a thumb stick. Not quite the most comfortable one, not, not near as nice as this one. This is a really nice fit. That's a really nice fit. This one, eh, it's more like a cudgel or shillelagh. Shillelagh is the Irish. Okay, this is the one, this is my go-to for most, most things that I need. All right, let's get into it. Well, first off, ah, the knee is sore. First off, you're going to have to go, oh, it's getting rusty, and find a nice uh, sapling. Now, yeah, I'll have to soak that one in. Citric acid is what I use. Then the next thing you do, once you cut it, don't, don't trim it up too close. I'm gonna get, not going to get this one wet. Oh, a little frog in the background, a little brown tree frog. Beep, 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 beep. That's still the dust 
the dirt from my from where I cut it off. I haven't done very much with this one at all. Some people are going to want to use things like round files, half rounds, but I prefer to only use a knife. Now, first off, you're going to have to have your knife really sharp. These have very, very fine bits of diamond embedded into them. Now, my cousin in Norway showed me this a long, long time ago. 1973, I believe. Thank you, Terry Upbroard. This is his sharpening jig. And he folds it once. And you go, what's that? And I thought about it. Straight line? Okay. Now what do we have? A corner. A right angle. Degrees? 90. That's 180. That's 90. We half it again. What do we have? 45. That's what I use for the braces when I'm building. Then we fold it one more time, halving that. Now the folds aren't precise, so it's not going to be exact, but it's close enough. 22 and a half. And that's the angle that you use most often when you're sharpening. Now a razor blade is going to be less than 22 and a half. A blockbuster, your axe is going to be more than 22 and a half. Now, what are you going to use for the cutting? Traditional Norwegian knife, various degrees of pocket knives. Okay, now, let's see if I can get this up close. All right, now I'm just making little cuts. Let's get the other one, I like the other one. Ah. Let's do this one. Why do I have a band, band aid on my thumb? The band aid is because I slipped. <laughs> yes, you do. So when you're cutting this way, you're just making little tiny cuts, just little ones. And eventually, it's just going to pop off like that. And then you can just continue. Let's get the thumb out of the way. It is quite hard wood, so you do need a sharp knife. Oh, little frog. Now this one, just in, push, twist, in, push, twist. And it's just taking off little tiny leaves, little, almost like flakes, thin layers, and each one goes in a little bit deeper. And before long, it's just going to pop off. Yes, I'm pushing fairly firm. Ta -da! Dent in the thumb. A lot of people will use uh, quick, quick approaches, saws, sandpaper, angle grinder, whatever. Pull out my Dremel. But for this stuff, there we go. For this stuff, all I have to have in my pocket is a little knife. Now this one's going to come off there, and I'll just keep keep right on going. These are the easier ones. Try and find something to brace it on. These are the easy ones. Probably not going to be in the in the camera.
There you go. Check to see if it's smooth. Because I don't want to remove all the things that make these pieces unique. No two of them are the same. <laughs> no two of them are even similar. Just a little wiggle. Almost. Almost. Reminds me of the uh, Mel Gibson movie Apocalypto. Pretty weird, heavy-duty movie. Quite good. Well done. There. You can always just trim them a little bit more. I prefer to leave them like that for a while. You can always go back to them. You can always take off a little bit more, but it's hard to put it back on. Yeah. Now, if these were going to be sitting around for a while, I'd probably hose them off again. But I don't want wet wood. Not when I'm working. Brass. For uh, suede shoes. Yep. That's it. Little bit by little bit. Now, right hand. Le this could be a left-handed one. Could be a left-handed one. We'll see. That's it. Wayne's Weird World. Walking sticks. Woof, woof, woof. Walking sticks. Woof, woof. Woof, woof, says the dog. All right. See you next time. Cheers.